you see my recent video showing my American Civil War plastic mesh armies, you'll know that I made them using plastic sewing mesh and some basic hobby supplies. Uh, this is an example of one of the units here. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can make similar armies using plastic sewing mesh and some basic modeling supplies that most of you will have to hand. This is an example of the type of unit that we're going to be making today. And I'm going to show you the steps that we need to take, starting with the basic construction of the unit, followed by the optional priming step. Then we're going to apply some basic colors. And finally, we'll finish it off with painting the base, decorating it with some flock, and adding a, a flag to the unit just to finish it off. So we're going to be using this plastic sewing mesh, which you can pick up in the sewing section of any hobby store. And the first thing you need to do is prepare it by cutting a width of the mesh, which is just slightly narrower than the size of the base that you're going to use. So you can see here I've cut enough so that it just fits onto the base nicely. And I'm going to be using this strip to create multiple lines of troops. So using a sharp knife, you'll want to cut strips off. I am having two rows of men per base. The first thing I tend to do is just, as you can see here, I'm cutting off the uh, what will be the shoulder pieces at an angle, trimming the bottom off. So I'm using the bottom of one row to be glued straight onto the base itself, which will form the, the feet effectively of the models. And I like to just trim the bottoms off as well so they don't have any pieces that stick out. And then you cut just below the next horizontal lineup. So you see here, I'm cutting that off so that when it comes away, you can start to see the, the basic shape of the, of the unit. And I, I, I like to make, as I say, two for each base. So you can see here, that's my two basic units. Give, make sure that the, the bottoms of the base where you're going to be gluing them on are trimmed away. And then the next thing I like to do is trim the trim the shoulders and tidy up any marks where there's uh, pieces are still joined at the head. So you can see here that the tops are a bit messy. So what I like to do is just trim that off so that the heads are completely separate. There's no bits of plastic joining them together. And then I cut wedges out in between each uh, figure so that it gives the impression of individual men. This is an optional step. You don't really need to do this, it's particularly if you're using uh, larger bases where you're going to have a lot more men in groups. This is a, uh, it can be a quite a time consuming step, but as I'm only having a few bases and there's relatively few uh, figures on each base, I think it's a, a nice step because it makes them look a bit more like individual soldiers on the base. So make sure you do that with all of the bases and then we're ready to mount them. So for mounting, I like to use super glue, run a, a bead of glue down the base of the unit and then line it up and apply it to your base. You might need to hold it in position for a few seconds. Make sure you don't get any on your fingers as well. And you'll find that this stuff glues relatively quickly. Now, if you're just going to use super glue, that's usually enough to hold it. But what I like to do as well is apply a layer of PVA or tacky glue just around the base afterwards, just to provide that bit of extra strength. Uh, sometimes the units, if you're playing with them a lot, you, as you tend to pick them up by the plastic rows of men, it can potentially snap the glue and it's just something that you want to try and avoid. Next thing to do then is, this is an optional step, take it outside, give it a quick blast with some uh, basic primer. I like to use gray and then we're ready to move on to the painting step. So the two basic colors I'm using for these models is a nice bright yellow and a dark gray. I tend to use dark gray instead of a black as the models are so small, black can be a bit too dark. So I like to use a dark gray. And then all we're doing with a nice thick brush is apply the base coat. So here, as I'm doing a samurai army, I'm painting the lower half of each figure in the dark gray color with a nice thick brush. You don't need to be too neat with this. And then once that's done, I let it dry for a few moments. It's really hot here at the moment in the UK, so it doesn't take very long. Then I follow that up with some yellow and I do the yellow around the chest areas, the back of the head, and then on top of the head as well. Um, I will occasionally be adding some dark gray to the tops of the head just to add a bit of variation in the unit. That's the basic uh, pattern of color. And then finally, I use a flesh tone to just dot um, a, uh, a small dot of the paint onto the faces of the unit so that you can clearly see which is the front and which is the back. And that's the basic unit painting done.
And next up we have basing. So basing, you can do what I've done here on the left and just paint the base green, leave it there. Or if you have access to some static grass and some flower tufts, you can make them look a bit nicer by applying some of that with some thin down PVA around the edge of the base, sprinkle on some flock, let it dry, knock off the excess, and uh, you're ready to go. I like to rim the base in black as well. For flags, I recommend picture hanging wire or floral wire as seen here. And then for the flag itself, I would use uh, tracing paper or Japanese calligraphy paper, which is what I tend to use. So the wire is going to be the flag pole and obviously the tissue paper or calligraphy paper will be the flag itself. So as you can see here, I use Japanese calligraphy paper. If you can't get hold of this, then as I said, tracing paper is, is absolutely fine will work just as well. If you're going to use regular printer paper, then choose a nice lightweight so that when you fold it over, it's not too thick and it still looks good, especially at these smaller scales. Making the flags is nice and easy. Depending on the size of the flag you want, you cut out the shape that you need. You can see here, I'm, I'm using the Japanese style, so I've got them nice tall flags. Wrap them round the copper, and then I tend to paint them afterwards. And then gluing them onto the units is nice and easy. Use a bit of super glue on the copper wire, and you can glue it to units here, or you can do what I've done. You can glue it to, uh, if you're making a, a command base, for example, this is just made using some paper. I've glued it straight to the paper. And again, just like with the units, if you want to make it a bit stronger, you can do so with some PVA glue. So hopefully this tutorial has been helpful. As you can see, it's not very complicated at all to make these units. If you have any more questions, post them in the comments below and let me know how you're getting on with making some of these armies yourself. In the meantime, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.